Greetings everybody. The following is a chat with Will Buxton, a motor racing broadcast journalist with two decades of experience in the sport. Will is most well known around the world these days for his role in the hugely successful Netflix series Drive to Survive. Will can also be found on racetracks around the world every other weekend, interviewing the world's best drivers and hosting shows on Formula One's own network. Hope you enjoy. So welcome. Thank you for joining. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Here we are in rather a rather grey August day in it's, Brighton. It's the height of British summer time. It's miserable. <laughs> Stereotypical. Bleak. Bleak. Um, or Dreek, as the Scottish would call it. <laughs> Dreek. So I'm with Will. Greetings. Hello. Nice to meet you. And um, we're going to talk about your... Uh, TM story, I suppose. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, when did you learn to meditate? Good question. I've uh, I've forgotten. It's, uh, I One think year it's, ago, ten I think years it's ago, a, a year, a year and a half ago. Um, yeah, eighteen months now. I eighteen think. months ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in the UK here, in the UK, in Oxford with Linda. Okay. Um, which was a really wonderful process um, and something I, I still look back on very fondly um, those those few days we were just coming out of COVID actually so a lot of it was sort of done via the app um, okay but the um, the beginnings and the meetings and, and all the important bits were, were with Linda in, in Oxford and what uh, brought you to learn what, what was going on in your life that necessitated you thinking i would like something to i need to i need help in some way what yeah. what did you need help with what was going on it's never just one thing is it uh i have time it was the build up <laughs> of of a lot but the real tipping point for me was um i suffered an anxiety attack on the motorway out of absolutely seemingly nowhere um i'd never had anything like it happen to me before and it terrified me um, and so I went on a bit of a, a journey after that of trying to figure out, well, what were the factors that led up to it and what could I do to try and mitigate the circumstances and stop it from happening again? Um, and I realized that work, life, um, the way I was trying to balance things, the way I was trying to escape things weren't really, weren't really working out for me. Um, and I tried all kinds of different things. I tried headspace and mindfulness and Wim Hof's bloody cold showers and all of that. And nothing really, really worked. Um, and then I was at a party and a friend of a friend started talking to me about, about transcendental meditation. And I, I've always been a massive Beatles fan. So I always knew about Maharishi Mahashogi and, and Rishikesh and, you know, and everything. But I'd never looked too deeply into it because, frankly, I thought it was all a bit fruity and, you know, just seemed a bit mad. Um, but I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll give this a go because she explained it so well and it sounded so positive and so, I don't want to say easy, but kind of, it just, it just sounded very natural. And I thought, you know what, I'll go and, and do the meeting. And if it's not for me, it's not for me. And if it is, it could be something really good. So, um, yeah, did that first group meeting again on a, on a Zoom call or whatever it was. Had the whole concept explained to me and thought this is, this is something that really appeals. This is something that sounds, sounds very worthwhile. So I went in for it and haven't looked back. And it's been one of the most positive things I've, I've ever done in my 40 odd years on this on this planet I, I can honestly say I'm a better person for it um, my emotions used to be like a roller coaster just up and down you know the lowest lows to the highest highs I had no midpoint it was those who know me will know you know for, you lived at the extremes yeah it, everything's like yes this is the best day ever or oh this is the worst thing ever. you know it was just there was up and down and there was no there was no midpoint and i know that that made me quite difficult to definitely difficult to live with um and to have found something that gives me more of an even keel um where i've been able to I, and i know in myself where i've been able to to find 
kind of peace and that that midpoint where yeah I, I do wave but I'm it's not the crashing up and down anymore it's far more <laughs> more neutral that doesn't mean I've lost the essence of who I am I'm still excitable and silly and emotional but the the extremities have certainly have certainly gone I, can I can I just, I want to wind back when you said you tried headspace and yeah stuff but they didn't work how do you know they didn't work do i mean what was your measurement of working did did they make me feel better uh, was it something that a i could stick to b i felt i was getting anything out of and c made me feel um that they were having a, a positive effect on me and and <laughs> the way I knew they weren't was because I didn't stick with them. Um, it was just too much of an... It was a real effort. And I thought, it can't be this hard to feel better. If if this is supposed to be helping me, and it's really difficult, and, I, and I'm not enjoying it, why am I putting myself through this? Um, and it just, yeah, it just, just, didn't, just didn't do anything for me. Same with the cold showers, you know? The first time you do it... You get out and you think, oh, I feel pretty good. And then day four or five, you're like, I can't keep doing this. It's just not good for me. Um, so, yeah, they yeah, they just, but it, you know, if something works for you, it, it sticks. Um, and and they just, they just didn't because they didn't stick. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, so 18 months ago, so you had your panic attack and then have you had one since? Um, or, or, or... I only had, I've only had one since. Um, and that, but that wasn't since I've, I've started doing TM. Um, but yeah, that was, that was pretty terrifying. Um, again, middle of COVID, um, I was still traveling a lot with work. I was doing PCR tests every 72 hours. Um, there was a lot going on as well, um, in my life, uh, personally, also with work that was very unnecessarily stressful um and had put me into a place where i was i was really not not happy and not in a good way um but i didn't realize how much that stress and anxiety had built up until i was driving down the motorway to go and have a pcr test for a flight i was taking a couple of days down down the down the line and i thought i was having a heart attack my chest tightened i couldn't breathe my hands started to claw um, on the steering wheel, I, and it was one of those smart motorways that didn't have a hard shoulder, obviously. Um, so I'm panicking at 70 miles an hour. What do I do? Where do I go? Managed to turn the steering wheel, kind of using my elbow in my clawed hands. Um, used my knuckle to phone my now wife, and I couldn't talk to her because my... You know, my mouth was sort of hanging, I was like, and and my whole body was just just felt like it was shutting down. And I thought, this is it. I'm checking out on the M42. Um, terrifying, um, but started to kind of get my breath back. Phoned an ambulance. They turned up and they said, "Yeah, you've had an anxiety attack." Never had one before, um, but it was clear at that point that it was a shot across the bows from my body of just saying, "You can't keep going the way you are. You can't keep." dealing with things or not dealing with things as you have been you've got to find something that levels you out mm. wow wow <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a wake up call and a half yeah it was it was pretty scary um and then just by the by um at a party with some with you know some really good friends and a friend of a friend was there and we were we were talking in the in the kitchen and I, taught, I explained what had happened and she said, you've got to try TM. And I was like, okay, um, explain it to me. And, and she did. And, and, and that's where it all kind of all started, really. And then, good, good, good. So, so you did the course uh, and the majority was on the app. And did you, did you take to the practice fairly quickly and easily? Yeah, I did. Um, it's kind of cool, you know, it, it's, it was easy and it was simple to get into. And, I th and that's one of the reasons why it's kind of stuck for me. Um, the notion of 20 minutes 
twice a day, you know, if you can't find 20 minutes twice a day, then that sort of proves why you need it <laughs> more than anything. Um, but yeah, very, very easy. Um, the, the, the concept that you take it as it comes, that, that conscious thoughts aren't this thing to be, uh, you know, seen as a negative. It's seen as a positive, it's seen as a part of it. So close your eyes, repeat your mantra and get to a place where, you know, your conscious thoughts come and they go. Um, very, very easy. Um, if it if it hadn't have been that easy, I think I don't know if I'd have, I'd have stuck with yeah. it. Um, but no, I never I never really had any 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 issues with the with the process. It was really simple. And so, if, can you? I, I, I'm interested in. So it's 18 months ago. I'm interested to hear how it might have changed your life yeah. in terms of personal and work can you just explain what your work is because i yeah, know yeah of course it, 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 not so, everyone knows. um so i i work in formula one as a as a broadcaster and a sort of broadcast journalist i've been working in the sport for 20 plus years now uh, i love it i never thought i'd get to do tv because uh, growing up that's what murray walker did and i never thought i'd get to do murray walker's job um and it all kind of uh, yeah, it happened by accident. I was a print journalist, fell into television completely by accident, and I've been doing that now for um, better part of a decade and a half. Started in the US, uh, and now I work for Formula One themselves, doing a lot of their digital content. And I'm on a, a, a little Netflix show called Drive to Survive, which has been massive, and very grateful to be a part of that. So, yeah, huge. It's been it's been it's been wonderful. But I've been been in Formula One now for twenty plus years. It's a lot of work it's a lot of travel um broadcasting is 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 a joy and, a, and an absolute sort of blessing to do that job but it's it's crazy stressful um live television is a drug of sorts um it is incredibly addictive you will never get a broadcast 100 percent right and i think that's what keeps you coming back is that constant search for improvement and for perfection which you will never achieve um and i get to talk about this thing that i love um and hopefully bring other people along for the ride and get them excited about this thing that i'm excited about um i love it but it's yeah it's there's a lot that goes into it a lot of preparation um a lot of research a lot of work it's a lot of long hours it's a lot of time away from home a lot of time on planes a lot of time in hotels um which sounds very glam, but it's 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 mostly going to a racetrack, back to a hotel, racetrack, hotel, racetrack, hotel, airport, home, um, twenty five times a year, um, and it's 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 a dream job. I I love it. I absolutely love it. And so I have two questions. Firstly, it sounds very busy and very packed and very responsibility pressures everywhere, left, yeah. right, and center. Does that? Does that mean it's a challenge, A, to fit in the meditation, and B, if you can, doing it is probably a good idea. It probably helps. So, Yeah, so trying to get the meditations in, it remains sort of the biggest bugbear, I think, for everybody to try and find that time. And we've been talking about it today that, you know, I have these ideas of it has to be at a certain time, but actually I can just fit them in differently. Waking up earlier at the hotel is not a big issue. So getting getting my morning one done is is easy. The afternoon one is is quite difficult and or has been quite difficult. But it's because I tried to to get it at a specific time. And I remember um so for me my afternoon meditation is very much that light switch off. The work is done, the day is over, have my evening meditation and then I'm I'm good and I sleep soundly and everything's wonderful. But I <laughs> I I hadn't realised how much of a light switch off it was until I I did it at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Now I'd only been meditating for about two or three months at this point, so I was still fairly new to it, and I didn't realise quite how much of an effect it, it was having on me until um, I did it in Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia is the the sessions are far later in the day than they are in in Europe for the the TV times. And I was having to do commentary for qualifying, which is the most intense moment of the weekend. You know, get out there, fastest lap count, let's go. But qualifying, I think, started at about 
7 or 8 p.m. And I did my meditation at 6 p.m. And so I did it. And my co-commentator, Jolian, who's an XF1 driver, he actually walked into the commentary booth and I'm sat there cross-legged on the floor, just, you know. Um, and he's like, oh, sorry. I was like, it's okay. I, you know, my 20 minutes is up. We're, we're, we're good. And it came into qualifying. And I was so relaxed. It was the worst qualifying commentary you've ever heard. Because it should be, you know, high intensity, <laughs> yeah, really, you know, you know, corner after corner after corner. Oh, this is amazing. And I was like, wow, it's really great. You know, I was so chilled. <laughs> so at that point, I was like, don't meditate before a broadcast because you'll be too, too relaxed. So <laughs> I've started to learn where I should and shouldn't meditate. <laughs> For you, what does it feel like to meditate? Oh, wow. So I get asked, I've been asked this a lot. I And I think... You know, TM is, is it's, it's kind of handed down person to person, really, through recommendations. And I think it's, it's such a gift that you can give somebody um, this sort of freedom um, and this, this real sort of peace of mind. Um, and if somebody asks me, what's it like? You know, we all know the, the well sort of worn trope of the the little uh, wooden boat and the big crashing waves and and jumping off the side of the boat but the um i i i tried to explain it to my daughter and she said but if you jump off the side of the boat won't you drown and how how do you have to hold your breath for the whole 20 minutes and i was like okay we've got to find an easier way to describe this so the way i've described it to people is like being in an elevator and you get in on the top floor with all of your stresses and your anxieties and they're the other people in the elevator. And then the elevator starts to go down and you'll go down a couple of floors and the doors will open and some of them will, will get off, but into their place will come a couple of conscious thoughts and then you'll ride them down a couple more floors and then they'll get out and one more might come on. But eventually it's just you and your mantra left in the elevator until your mantra gets out and then it's just you riding down in the elevator to the the next few floors um and it's it's just peace you know um the occasion where if you're fortunate enough to to reach that point where the mantra does go and it doesn't happen as we know it doesn't happen every time i remember the first time it happened and your brain suddenly kicks in and goes, oh, we're doing that thing. We, 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 we've only heard about this before and we're, we're there. This is it. And you go, stupid brain, shut up. I was really enjoying that. Um, um, but, but when you realize you've been there, and for me, the first time I, I realized I'd got to that point where it was pure thought, no conscious thoughts, no mantra, no nothing. Absolute peace, absolute quiet, at one with pure thought, pure consciousness, I burst into tears in the middle of my meditation. And, 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 and Was this a sitting cross-legged on the floor at the Saudi Arabia no, Grand Prix? <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't. I was, I was, at, I was at home. Um, but it was, it was such a wow moment. You know, um, it, was, it, was, it was incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, and again, you know, if people are sort of listen to this and 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 haven't found that, they might think it it does sound fruity and it does sound weird and stupid and and. But I kind of think that you know, there's got to be more than 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 what we see and and where we are and and um, and we we know animals and and insects can hear sounds that we can't hear and can see things that we can't see, so we know there's more to consciousness than our awareness allows us to experience. So if we know that and we accept that, we have to be able to at least have an understanding or appreciate that there might be an ability to go beyond and that there are more than the simple states of awake, asleep and deep sleep, that there's, there's more. Um, and I was skeptical massively skeptical um but to have very simply and very easily with no effort sat there with my eyes closed 
repeated my mantra to myself and hit this point where there was, for the first time in my life, nothing but... And you don't realise it until you come out. You don't even realise you're there. But the moment of awareness of, holy shit, everything's gone. Everything's gone. You're like, okay, yeah, that's that that actually just happened. It's it's, it's a big wow moment. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> it is good, yeah. And I think, like you said earlier, um, the first time it happens, it's it's quite a dramatic thing. Yeah, it's. But then, like anything, if you if it happens more times, then it becomes more familiar. Yes. And it becomes normalised. Yeah, and your body almost... The f- when you start... when I, Well, when I started meditating, I remember the feeling of, of kind of dropping down levels and my body was almost sort of resisting it, going, oh, this is, this is a bit weird. What, what's going on here? Um, and then it, it relaxes into it. And you're like, oh no, it's okay. We've been here before. And your mind's like, yeah, we don't have to freak out about this. It's all okay. We can we can keep going. And then and, and you sort of drop. It's 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 like going to the gym. You know, the first time you look at all of the machines and you think this is this is terrifying. And you try and use one of them, and your muscles go, well, we're not using that again. That's horrible. Um, but the more you use it, the more your muscles get used to it. And and yeah, you know, and your brain is the most powerful muscle that you have. Yeah. And allowing it to be restful yet yet so alert to be in that state is um you've got to try and recondition for me to try and recondition 40 years of of your brain thinking or being that aware Mm -hmm. to get it to a place where it's that relaxed and that calm um yeah it's 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 quite something it really is quite something (laughs) how different do you think your life would be now if you hadn't started transcendental meditation Ooh, that's an interesting question um it's impossible to say isn't it um, it's, yeah, i know you, it's you kind know. of a trick question but you take a guess well for I the know, sake of entertainment yeah I, well i think the one thing I, I i know for sure is that it has positively affected all the relationships that i have in my life so that's with my my family with my wife with my daughter um, my professional relationships, the way I approach my work, the way I approach my, my everyday life has changed completely. Um, I'm a much more rounded and calm person than I, than I was. Um, my relationships are, I think, are far better now than they were. I, I think I have a, a greater level of understanding. And, 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 and a, a, a great deal of that is... I think when I when I started on it, I thought that transcending would give me a better uh, awareness of. Uh, uh, is it a discovery of self? And part of me thinks it is a discovery of self, but it's also the rejection of an ego, and and an ego not being necessarily the um, what what we think an ego. Of, uh, as being which is um uh, sort of a narcissistic um uh, uh, arrogance but rather the conscious awareness that we have of the person that we think that we are and that transcending allows you to go beyond the construct that you have in your mind of the person you think you are to a place where none of that exists and once you reach that and you achieve that and you come out the other side you realize that all of the facade there's 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 something far deeper behind it and so you can you can deal with what life throws at you and what other people sort of dish out to you and not treat it as something that is so personally pointed at you and actually try to understand their side of it and what they're going through you you do you see what i mean you don't yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you let go of that ego because until that point everything that happens to you you like you 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 view it within the frame of how it affects you and that can create uh you know 
either elation or anger or, or any of those very visceral and extreme emotions. But if you view it through a different frame of, well, this isn't my reality and that they're not, their reaction, their, what, what, they're, what they're going through is actually in their frame. So try and view it through their frame rather than your frame. And it gives you a much better perception on that. And, and that's what I kind of learned by, if that makes any sense at all, by going down to that point by transcending and losing that sense of, of ego, that awareness of, of, of the, the construct you create for yourself, um, you come out the other side with a much better appreciation of, of everybody else's sort of reality. I think. Yeah, I think um, the metaphor that comes to mind is the one from the Upanishads, which is the wave in the ocean. Mm. And... Because um, when you're talking about different states of consciousness, it can unless you're unless you have that state of consciousness, it yeah. can be a bit like what does that mean? Yes. Yeah. But the I tell me if I've because so every wave is individual and, and it rises and it falls. Yeah. So each wave has its own uniqueness. So if it was a human, you could say it's yes. a, it has an ego and a sense of I. Uh, but each wave is made of the same ultimate constituent. So although there is difference, separation, movement on the surface, the essence of the thing is, is, con is, is consciousness one, is, yeah. is unified. Yes. And oh, we're getting into unified yeah, theory yeah, yeah, now, yeah. aren't so, we? So now this is very interesting. In See, I'm not. I'm, I don't physics and me no, never got on when I was. This is just. I just like to look at nature. Yeah. Uh, so the when the when the ocean moves it it when it be, is a wave it doesn't lose its oceanness it no. it it just is expressed as as a as an individual wave but it's still the ocean so yeah. in a way it's not really one or the other it's both yes and what i found in life is that i think what you're talking about is that for some reason, until we have an awakening or we do some meditation or something happens, we think we, we're only living on that surface tip of the wave. And and that's in our body. And, and it's, that's what we are. We don't appreciate the, the, the ocean aspect at it, all. Yeah, it's... Until then, you are living very much with the sole appreciation of your place within the world, believing very much that you are the centre of the world and that everything revolves around you. And that's quite an immature way of dealing with things. And, you know, as a child, you think the world revolves around you. And as you get older, you, you learn that it doesn't. But still, the only frame of reference that you have is the only frame of reference you can have, which is through your eyes, the way you experience the world. But... What I found through TM is to appreciate not just my place within this world, this consciousness, this existence, but its place within me. And that and that was huge. And that was that was I think one of the biggest one of the biggest lessons and one of the biggest sort of takeaways from it. And what's really that's what sort of moved me and affected mm, me the mm, mm. the most. Yeah. That, that we are all part of this one however you want to describe it, whether we're all part of you know, one unbounded ocean of consciousness as as that's Dr. It. Nader says, or you know, whatever. It's it's if consciousness is all there is, you know, the the that we are ultimately all bound by that one life force, that one energy. And, you know, if you are a religious person, you may see that energy as being God. My sister, for example, is very devoutly Roman Catholic. And I know um would far rather that I just prayed rather than meditated because she you know, doesn't quite understand where 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 this is coming from. And I tried to say to her yeah, but but Pip, like in the Bible, sure, you know, it says the kingdom of God is within you. So if you can get a better appreciation of who you are and a better appreciation of, se of self, then it follows that you have a better appreciation of God. And she was, and she just kind of looked at me, just like, 
<clears throat> don't give don't you know don't she can't argue with no, that no i know you yeah, can't, can't you can't argue with that <laughs> oh um, you got me <laughs> exactly but um but but yeah but 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 here's the thing you know i'm i'm never going to go around and preach to people and say you must do this you must do, you must do that and i said this this was an amazing gift that somebody gave to me and that i would love to and I, and I have shared with with friends and, and, you know, some of them have have gone and done the course and are hugely appreciative and, and love it. And it's been very transformative for them. Um, but it's not going to be for everybody. And some people do want to do their, you know, do do mindfulness or, or do um, headspace or do their their cold showers. Some people like to go to the gym and they like to go running, play squash, do whatever you got to find in life. You've got to find what works for you. And I'm just very appreciative that I've been able to find in TM something that works for me um, and that has given me such a great appreciation of, of, of the person I can be as well and the person that I'm really glad that I've, I've become. Um, and, and it has, it really, really has changed me. Um, but I want to go deeper, I want to find out more, um, you know. And it's and it's really nuts because I and I and I go back to basics again. I go right back to the start. I grew up and always have been my entire life a massive Beatles fan, and you know the whole link to Maharishi and Rishi Kesh and all of that. Um, I've I'd always wondered about it. I'd always wondered, you know, what what was it that that was so appealing? What was it that you know the 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 that set them on on that path and actually and this this is going to sound like the most ridiculous name drop but it it's kind of it's another one of the reasons that i thought i'd give tm a go um one of the 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 guys i used to work with um at f1 he was always talking about how one of his granddad's friends had taught him to play guitar and how he was just this really chilled guy and you know blah blah, blah. anyway his granddad's jackie stewart and Jackie's mate George was was George Harrison, obviously. So Dylan is is always talking about you know how when he was young his his granddad's mate George taught him to play guitar and you know and George was really super chilled and and we we had um, Dylan and I actually had really nice chats about about TM and what George had told him about about TM when he was young and so that was another that was another good reason to kind of give it a go. I love that. Yeah, yeah. My Family. granddad's mate, Fat, George. My granddad's George mate, who? George. Don't George, know. Yeah. Yeah, George. Don't know, just you know, George. He had, he had long curly hair. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And he was, Liverpoolian. Yeah, and he was really cool. Play, <laughs> play guitar. Mega. He was in a band or something, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, it's uh, it's been... Uh, it, it, and, it's, and it's something that I know I have now for life. You know, I have this, this tool that I, that I can use any time. I just have to be a bit more... Be a bit more regular with my practice because because my wife knows if I haven't meditated. She is the judge. She is the judge, but she knows. You know, I will be. I'll walk around the house, and trust me, years gone by. You know, my laptop stopped working, and I would. You know, I hit the table or I, you know, throw the laptop across the room or something. You know, and 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 just an inanimate object. It's not its fault. It doesn't work. Um, but today, I'll, I'll, if I am short-tempered or, you know, I just I start to, to go, she'll take one look at me and say, have you meditated? And I'll be like, no. She's like, I know. I know when you haven't meditated. And it's, it's really fascinating that... And I, I think that shows the, the positive effect that it, that it does have, you know. And also reinforces to me that I... I must have been a bit of a nightmare to live with. Um, yeah, so just just very grateful. <laughs> and if you could come up with your entire experience of TM in less than five words, not a sentence, but just five words to summarise. Five could be separate words or together. Um, uh, calm, Adjective. peace, um tolerance understanding um rest 
Last question. What would you say to someone who was thinking of starting TM but hadn't quite yet decided? I'd say um, do the... Um, to someone who was thinking about doing TM. Yeah, because a lot of people yeah. are sort of, you know, they've heard of it. Maybe they're on the fence. Something's off, putting them off. Oh, totally. And I was but, one but of those... But they're not sure. I was one of those people for the longest time that had heard about it thought it might be worth a go maybe it was a bit fruity wasn't too sure um you know do i have to do yogic flying i remember that as a kid i remember maharishi on the tv yoga yeah thinking that's that's a bit nutty that's not you know uh anyway what would i suggest i would say i mean The introduction that I had to it was from a friend. And then the first step is literally an hour of hearing what it is and why it works and what the theory is behind it. So it's an hour. Give it an hour, you know. Um, and if at the end of it you don't think it's for you, then you don't think it's for you. It's, it's really simple. But if there is any element in it that you think, you know what, that sounds like that might be quite helpful give it a go you know it's not some mad crazy cult they're not gonna steal your money in your house um you know not gonna brainwash you with all mad stuff it's not a religion it's just you know what i have this word this sound that i say to myself twice a day and somehow i don't know how it works um, me, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> um, it it takes me to a place of total calm that helps me to deal with the crazy bullshit that this world throws at you. And and you know we are in a stress. Um, what are they calling it now? It, you know, it is a pandemic of of stress. It is a global. It's a it's a killer. You know, we have never had stress at the level that, that that we do in, you know, in the world today, whether it's from work, whether it is the ridiculous anxiety created by social media, um, the anger that just bubbles up in everyone through everything, whether it's the news cycle, whether it's, as I say, social media the necessity to constantly work as prices rise consistently and we worry daily for ourselves, our families, our way of life, our normality, everything. Um, it's a really difficult reality to, to live in right now for a lot of people. How do you deal with that? Um, Everyone needs a coping mechanism. Everybody needs something that will calm them and just take the edges off, you know. Um, and this is, for me, something that's that's really helped. Um, yeah, that's... I guess that's... That's beautiful. I guess really that's, eloquent. I guess that's it. It's just, you know, but it is, it's it's... Life, life is hard at the moment, and the, the additional stresses that exist today that never existed before are are awful. You know, one of the, one of the reasons I think that my anxiety got as high as it was was because I couldn't disassociate myself from from social media, um, and that you know, the more followers I got, the more negativity that came, hatred, death threats, all those kind of things, really nasty. But it doesn't have to be like that. It could be, you know, you're struggling with body image. You're struggling that what happened with me was I was getting so wound up with with sort of political situations and you know, there was global, national, and, and I just kept seeing over and over again things getting posted that just infuriated me and made me angrier. And, and you feel powerless and you can't do anything, so you and it just bubbles up inside you and that compounds that and it just builds, builds, builds stress, anger, anxiety blah, 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 blah. work, money you know 
<laughs> need something to take you away from that. Um, and the ability to disassociate, to go beyond, you know, the, the mortal realm that we have, to, to get to a place of, of peace. And that's all it is, just, just peace. Whether you like the analogy of, and it is still a lovely analogy, that you're on the boat and you have the crashing waves of stress and anxiety. And you can look at those waves and say you don't exist. And they do. Or you can look at those waves and tell them not to crash down on you, but they still will. Or you can jump off the side, transcend, drop to the ocean bed where it is calm and peaceful, and just sit there for 20 minutes, twice a day, and let all of the world's bullshit go on way up there. Just... And the biggest lesson of all, and the first thing that we're taught with meditation, is take it as it comes. But that's something that you can take into life as well. It doesn't just have to be with your meditation, it can be with life. Okay, you're stuck in a traffic jam. Two years ago, I'd be screaming out of the window at nobody in particular about the fact that I was going to be 10 minutes late for a meeting that really didn't matter. Now I just sit there, take it as it comes. There's nothing I can do to change this. Take, it doesn't mean I don't care it just means there's nothing I can do take it as it comes and just let it be I guess you know that's that's it that's it brilliant um, but it's what you say there about about letting you fit into your own skin that's a that's a big part of it yeah because we we and particularly in the world now we you know we're all struggling to to fit in or you know who are we where do we where do we fit into this this world um and a lot of people struggle with that um as as i said knowing that it's not just about you and your place in in the universe but that the universe has a place within you as well just yeah allows you to kind of completely eliminate that that ego of mm -hmm. yeah mind you that i I feel there can be a problem where people then say that the ego is a bad thing. Yeah, no. But, but that's not the case. No, I, I think... mean, not, not ego, as, as I said, not ego is in a, 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 an arrogance. You know, we, right. we talk about ego and we always think, if someone says, oh, he's got such an ego, you know, we think arrogance. But I think ego is just awareness, awareness of who we think we, we are. Sense Your, of I. Exactly, sense a sense of, of I is, is your ego. Yeah, um, is which your, is necessary to function. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. Yeah, key. But key. but but. So I'm gonna. Sorry, oh, go for I, it. You know, I th I think what you're saying is, it's not all that there is. No, that's that's the but difference. It's, but it's the frame of reference. Yes. So you, it's like a your 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 viewpoint zooms out. Yes. Yes. It's, it's exactly that. Yeah. Your the frame. You realise that the, your frame of reference has actually always been quite limited. Exactly. To with two. I, I liken it to one of these a zoom lens. Yes. That's that you know you've grown up and it's been close up. Yeah. Like a macro, I think that's called. Yeah. And then one day, or some someone bangs it. Yeah. And the lens, and it like it zooms out a bit. And you go, whoa! I can what was that? I'll compare it <laughs> right now. So my my. Uh, my daughter, my, my second child, she's a month old. And every couple of weeks, she has a sudden lens zoom. And it's similar to that, that you, you, you have your view of what the world is, and then suddenly it opens up and to see her little eyes just go, because she's suddenly got this, this view. Yeah. And everything's amazing, yeah. you know, and that's, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I call it the lens of consciousness because I think what we were discussing earlier, your, your state of consciousness is your reality. Yes. And you see and experience everything through that. So when it shifts, it's very meaningful. Mm, absolutely. 
but you don't know it until you know it. Exactly. Because yeah, completely. You, because you completely. Because because <laughs> how? But, but how, how would could, you? How could you? Yeah, I might. You couldn't. So, and I've always been interested. Like, you know, sometimes you have a, sh- a shift or something, but it's not. It's not something you were even looking for. No. Because because when you've had and it, you think, oh my god, I need to share this. Yeah. Everyone should have this. But it's and then you're like, I, well, how do I? How do I give that to someone else? And I didn't appreciate that that would happen. One of the things we didn't talk about yet, um, but with that first meditation in the morning, that light switch on is really... Is it still recording? It's It's going to go. 57 minutes. It's really... We'll go quick. Um, That light switch on in the morning gives me uh, focus and allows me to compartmentalize all the work that I need to do because I have so much going on with work that actually to have this ability in the morning, do my meditation, and then it's like, right, I have increased impetus, focus. Oh, and I had a medical last week, right, for insurance purposes. Guy got dot comes around, does my blood pressure and heart rate and all that, and goes, oh, you must work out. I'm like, what? He's like, your blood pressure's really good. Um, Heart rate's great, really, really calm and all this. And I'm like, I haven't been to the gym in a year. He's like, oh, well, your blood pressure's amazing. I was like, okay. So, and apparently that's all part of this Brilliant. beautiful thing. So, so no need I, to do any exercise or go to the gym. Just meditate. My belly says otherwise. <laughs> I definitely need to go back to the gym. Um, I don't, uh, yeah. you got to compete with those young drivers, oh, I've right? Got, well, I have a sympathy belly. Uh, I, that's, what, that's, that's the excuse I've had for the last nine months with my, with my beautiful pregnant wife. That, uh, oh, I see. I had, I had you a, you I had joined a, her. I joined in. Yeah, I joined in. Um, <laughs> you carried the same amount of weight. That's what I was going for. Absolutely. I don't have that excuse see, anymore. I told you that you, you, you're growing in empathy. And- this is it this is it. Well, i now have a rest that i can i can lay my my beautiful child on my belly but no I need to get rid of that so yeah do need to go back to the gym but in the meantime yeah apparently uh blood pressure is great so thank you maharishi good times have you ever driven in a formula one car yes i rate well i raced some um single seaters i actually raced against max verstappen back in 2014 and lance stroll when they were first starting out um, I say raced. I shared a racetrack with them. Oh, yes. They were. I was they were say, did you win? No, God, good Lord, no. <laughs> um, they, they, they were just on another level, and they are on another level. You know what they say: those who can do, and those who can't, talk about it. And uh, I'm very happy having made a career of talking about it because I know I could not. <laughs> you do don't that. Sh- suffer the embarrassment of having to. <laughs> Honestly, what those guys do, um, yeah, I'm, I am a, a lifelong fan, and to be able to, you know spend time with your heroes and uh share their stories with the world is uh it's a it's a great honor it's a real pleasure good oh cool are we done yeah i think so yeah it was lovely was great thank, thank you me. very much really appreciated it it's been lovely yeah thank you very much mate i'm glad we, I'm glad we made it yeah me too